on paper, this was a decent game. Honestly, even on the ice, this was a decent game. But on a personal note, I hate games like this. I really don't have anything quality to break down. The goals the Avs gave up were obvious mistakes and poor goaltending, and little more than that. Avs lose to the Vegas Golden Knights 5-2. to two. Oh my goodness gracious! Was it in time? Score! Justice is served! When you give up a goal, especially a horribly sloppy and soft one in the first 10 seconds, that's never good. Vegas wins the opening faceoff and tries a stretch pass that Sam Gerrard is able to break up, but it goes off of his skates and he completely loses track of the puck, checking to his left as the puck skitters to his right. Just completely loses it. There's no real explanation for that one other than a misread that allows William Carlson to beat him to the puck. Gerard does a decent job of recovering and forcing him to the outside on his backhand side to a tough angle. This is not an impossible shot to stop. A fairly not great backhand as well. I'll say not great might even be kind of weak. And Dubnik just doesn't stop it. one nothing, 10 seconds in. On one hand, I want to say this goal set the tone for the game, but on the other, I do think the Avs battled well against that tone. There was messiness, but they killed off penalties. They kept it a one-goal game through most of the first period, and through sheer hard work, they get a greasy goal to even things up later in the first. Avs set up in the offensive zone with Taze in deep here, is able to get it back to the point. A shot from Graves never gets through, but some hustle from Comfer contests the puck long enough to get help. Taves is able to come in and the Avs maintain possession in the offensive zone on what probably should have been a clear from Vegas. Taves walks in again, he's able to dish this puck off, they make a decent play, and it's an initial shot that, honestly, let's be real, that was a poke check into his own goalie. Flurry makes the save there, but can't handle the rebound. Three Avs crashing, this time a puck comes out to the Avs, Taves is able to pick it up and finish. We've seen it time and time again. Hard work, getting greasy goals is how you can get yourself out of a rut in a many different ways. And the Avs have to feel pretty good about that first period. Despite the messiness, despite the mistakes, it's an even period, and they get to go into their favorite period tied. In the underlings, the second period was great. The Avs dominated it in that regard, but... The underlings don't matter if they don't show up in the score, and they didn't show up in the score. Look, if you want to beat quality teams, yes, I get it. It's your third string goaltender. You're missing your leading goal scorer. There are missing issues with the Avs, but... It's just not an excuse for goals like this going in the net. This is a weak shot on the ice from the point coming from Max Pacioretty towards the net. Look, I've been told that it doesn't hit Devon Taves' stick. I don't think it hits Devon Taves' stick. People have said there's an angle that definitively shows it. I can't find one. But I don't think it hits Devon Taves' stick as it's coming in. It's hard to tell. But you can see the puck coming in there, and then it lands on the ice and skitters past Taves' stick. If this isn't going on net, and Taves does nick it a little bit and slightly readjust it, this puck is still very close to going on net, to the point where I'm pretty sure if Dubnik sees it, he would have reacted to it. Instead, Dubnik just stands there. Whether it hits Taves' stick or not, this puck just trickles in under him. You cannot be happy with a goal like that. Here's another angle. You're not going to be able to see if it hit Taves' stick or not, but Dubnik, just slow to react. Now the Avs did hit a couple of posts in this game, which could have changed the outcome. Hey, so apparently I'm bad at counting. It was actually the Avs hitting three posts in this game, so yeah. But I'm going to be honest. Puck don't lie. The Avs just didn't deserve to win this hockey game pretty much through and through. And even when you're controlling play, anytime you give up a goal that banks in off your goaltender... Yeah, I'm going to consider that a soft goal. First of all, Patrick Nemeth has got to stop getting caught behind plays. He loses a puck battle in the neutral zone, and that creates an odd man rush. Three on two, as he can't be effective in this play at all. It essentially becomes a two on one, as Connor Timmins has to slide across and play defense for Nemeth out of the play. From there, the initial save from Dubnik gets made, which is great, but he gives up a bit of a weak rebound. The puck comes in behind. He makes the initial save, but puts himself in an extremely weird position where he does not seal off his near post. Instead, he's out here in this crazy area where he can't really do anything effective, and the second chance opportunity 
opportunity from Stone. He sees Dubnik out of position. He bounces it off his back, and in it goes. And here's where there's not anything interesting about this game. Vegas finished their chances. The Avs couldn't stop them, and then the Avs struggled to finish their own. It's not like the Avs played horribly. They were out-possessing Vegas heavily in the second period. They were just not finishing, and then they were letting Vegas finish. It, I don't I don't know how else to put this. I know this isn't super insightful, and that's why I, this game was just kind of meh to me. The Avs do eventually get some putt luck late in the second period to make it a one-goal game again, though. Finally, a bit of proper puck luck here on this one for the Avs. McKinnon just gets poke-checked. It comes right back to Graves, who walks in, takes a sidestep, fires a wrist shot. A good job to beat Petrangelo as the first defender up high, but then he gets lucky. As Martinez, the man in front, you're going to see it bounce off of his back leg, off the inside of the knee, and perfectly up into the net. Don't ask any questions, take that one, and try to get yourself back into the game. That pretty much sums that one up. The Avs head into the third period down one. If they had showed any penchant for coming back at all in third periods, maybe there would have been some hope there, but frankly, the Avs just have not shown the ability to do that at all. And they didn't. So, it's pretty straightforward. A very poor decision leads to a very poor two-on-one, leads to this game being over. This puck is going to come to Kadri a little bit higher than the high slot, I would say, and this is just baffling to me. As he receives this puck, look, I understand settling a puck, loading up on it, and shooting it, but this takes far longer than normal, even for Kadri, to get control of this puck and fire it off, to the point where, by the time that he's set and ready to shoot this puck as he hangs it out wide, it's too late. It's a bad decision to shoot this puck at this point, as Stone has been able to drift into your shooting lane. He fires it anyway. Oh, look at that. 0-7 when trailing to start the third period, just to prove my point. Not good. It gets blocked, it bounces out, it creates a two-on-one where the defense is less than spectacular, as Taves doesn't really take away anything, he just kind of slides off into uh, outer space, doesn't use his stick at all, Nas can't get back, and this is not Dubnik's fault at all, but this is insanity, look at how far out of the net he is, and look at the awful effort to get back and even try and save this. It's already on Patch's stick, and Dubnik hasn't even turned his head to track the puck yet. Literally could shoot this puck anywhere in the net. All you have to do is put it anywhere in the 4x6, and this is a goal. The, the shot is released, it's about 0.2 seconds from going in, and is Dubnik even covering 1% of the net there? I, it doesn't seem like it. He goes top half of the net anyway because they're NHLers, but Jesus. That makes it 4-2. Eventually, an empty netter would make it 5-2. This game was what it was. I'm not too worried about it, but at the same time, the Avs have to be better. And they will be better when Philip Grubauer is in net, when Miko Ranton is back on the top line. It's very easy to see that, and the good news there, the reason I bring it up, is because they will be back this weekend. So, I wouldn't fret about it. The Avs have a bunch of weaker teams coming up to get right against as well. Uh, look, would have loved to see them win this game. They could have very well put themselves in position to easily take first in the West. Now, it's looking like they might have to settle for second, or certainly it would have to be a big battle for them to get back to first. But honestly, they've clinched a playoff spot. You have to go through four rounds of playoffs anyway to do the thing. I'm not going to put too much stock in it beyond that. It was messy. It's over. That is the end of this game video review. Thank you for watching. Check out the DNVR for all of our coverage. I am Rudo, and thank you for coming to my TED Talk.